Good morning. My name is Kane Gonzalez. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our daily time of devotional and prayer. Uh, we're encouraged by each and every one of you that join us each and every day uh, as we pray and just take a look at what God is doing and continues to do with his word. Our devotional for today uh, is going to be found in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, at the end of Matthew 11, 11 28, Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When you know the context of this verse, it, it can be incredibly peaceful, and we see just what Jesus is talking about and how he comforts someone who is going through a very tough trial, a time of doubt, a time of fear. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 11, John the Baptist is in prison. And the next time that we read about him in the book of Matthew is his execution. So John the Baptist is in prison, uncertain about his future and what it holds. And John sends two of his followers, two of his disciples, to Jesus to ask him a very specific question. John wants to know and sends his followers to ask Jesus, Are you truly the Messiah? Are you truly who you say you are? Or do we seek for another? Are you really the one who is coming? the one that has been prophesied that will deliver us. And when you think about that, the life that John the Baptist had, John the Baptist was the one that was prophesied himself as the herald of the Messiah, the one who was to prophesy that the Messiah was coming. John the Baptist was the one who said, Behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, and this is how he got his name, put his hands on our Savior, on Jesus, submerged him in water. And when he came back up, the heavens opened, and he heard the voice of the Father say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That same John the Baptist, when faced with the uncertainty and fear of the future, basically had to look back and had doubts, and had to know for sure, and he had to ask Jesus one more time, Are you truly the Son of God, are you truly who you say you are? And when you think about that, John the Baptist, after all he had been through, all he had seen, all he had witnessed, still had doubts, still had fears, still wanted security that he had not wasted his life and that he should continue to follow God. When you think that John the Baptist had those doubts and fears, I know that each and every Christian and every one of us have had times of doubts, of fears, that, that sense of, what if? What is going to happen? What is coming? And what's important about this, Jesus' response to John when the followers get there and ask him is a sign of peace. John sends his followers to Jesus, and Jesus responds not by getting angry, not by getting frustrated, not by getting disappointed that John would have doubts or fears. Instead, Jesus replies and tells him, look, you've seen the miracles that we have done. The, the blind receive their sight, the deaf can hear again, the, the lame get up and walk. Even the poor are having the gospel preached to them. Don't be offended, don't be ashamed of me. And then Jesus turns to the crowds, the multitudes that were there, and he defends John. He says, what do you think, who do you think John is? John is not a soft person. John is the greatest ever born among women. Think about that. The greatest ever born up until that point, Jesus defends him, and there he is in a time of doubt, a time of fear, a time of uncertainty, when he is in a literal prison, trapped, and nowhere to go. I don't know about you, but there have been many times, even now, where I wonder, what does the future hold? Why are we going through the trials that we're going through? Uh, how can God use this for good? Is it worth continuing to follow God, even though... Everything that I have planned is no longer turning out the way that I thought it would. And that's where, at the end of the chapter, Jesus, again, says to the multitude, listen, he gives a personal commitment and a personal opportunity to follow Jesus. All you who labor and are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. I love how Jesus says this because Jesus doesn't say, come to me and I will lift the burden from you. He doesn't say, come to me and I will remove the situation or the circumstance and I will remove you from it. No, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. 
Come to me and I will, no matter what your situation, no matter what your circumstance, what you're going through, I can help you through that. But you have to come to me first. It's such an important message that Jesus gives to John. You know what? Jesus can handle our doubts. Jesus can handle our fears. In fact, he does the, not only does he take those doubts and fears, but then he instills it and says, I can give you rest. I can give you peace. So as we pray this morning, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Whatever doubts you have, whatever fears you have, whatever insecurities you may have, now is the time to bring them before God, bring them before Jesus, cast them at his feet, because Jesus has experienced some of the emotions that we're going through. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed, not my will, but yours. If there is any way for me not to go through the cross and through the suffering that I'm about to, let it be that way. But no matter what, God, your will, not mine. So Jesus knows what it's like to come before God and pray, you know what, God, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to anyway. So what an amazing testimony that Jesus has and how he responds to doubt, to fear, to insecurities. So we know that we can go with confidence before him and we can bring those to his feet. So let's pray now. And then after I pray for a couple moments, I'll pause and I'll allow a time for us to all bring our doubts, fears, insecurities, whatever we're going through, to bring it before Jesus and ask him to help us. Help, ask him to help us have peace in this time. And then I'll close in prayer. So let's pray. Father, we come before you and we praise you because of who you are. Uh, you are a great God. You are a powerful God. But you also a God who created us, who loves us, who knows our inner thoughts. And as we look at John the Baptist, a man who had, in many ways, a miraculous life and got to know you, got to know Jesus better than almost anybody else, if he struggled with doubts and fears and insecurities, then there is no chance that I have personally. And so I bring those before you today. You are the Prince of Peace. You are a comforter. So we pray that when we doubt, because when we do what is right and things still turn out wrong, there is frustration and there are questions. When we know and we do things and our results aren't visibly seen, Lord, we doubt and we question. Think of Noah who preached for 120 years and the only people on the ark at the time of the flood was him and his family. I pray that you would help us to never judge your faithfulness or your closeness based upon the blessings that we receive or the trials that we go through because our situations don't dictate who you are and, and how our relationship to you is. So I pray that you would help each of us to not only remember uh, who you are, you are a rock, you are a foundation, you are our strength. We run to you because we can find rest. We also help you pray that you would help us to remember where you are. You are with us. You go before us. You intercede for us. And you are a part of our lives. So we thank you and we praise you for just being a God who loves us, who cares about us, and is vested in our lives. You are a redeemer, and we pray that you would help us to find rest in you. We cast our cares upon you, and I pray that any time we don't know, we would come before you and we would just cast our cares upon you. So, Father, I'm going to take 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and just come before you and personally pray before you and bring my cares before you. I pray that everybody who is praying along with me would do the same, that they would be honest and open and transparent and that they would bring their fears, their doubts, their insecurities before you and that we would be, we would be encouraged together because we are going through many similar situations. So we pray this at this time.
Father, we thank you so much that you are a God that, that gives us peace, that gives us rest. You have modeled rest not only in your creation, um, but in our lives as well. Uh, there is rest and rhythm. And when we go through times that throw us out of what we expect or what we would consider to be normal, where we lose our rhythm throughout, the, throughout our weeks, days, months, we know that uh, we doubt, we fear, we imagine the what ifs, what could happen, what will happen, and whether it's a health issue, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a family issue, and everything in between. I pray that you would just draw us close, that you would draw us near. We know that your word tells us that nothing can separate us from you, not even our fears. You are faithful to us. So I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you in return. You would help us to continue to work for your honor and your glory. And that no matter what comes in the future, we know we can have confidence in it because we know that you are there and we know that you love us. So I pray that you would be with us today and you would encourage us and you would allow us to serve you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us today. I want to leave you with one final thought. I'm going to read this verse from 2 Timothy 2.13. It says, If we doubt, if we believe not, if he abides, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. So no matter what you're going on, no matter where you're at in life, God will be faithful to you. He will always be there. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And I know that we can be encouraged because we serve a God who connects all of us. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.